So as she said, I'm an eating psychology coach. Now when most people hear that I'm an eating psychology coach, I get one of two responses. People are either, either extremely interested or they slowly start to back away. <laughs> food is such an intimate topic, isn't it? So food is so intimate because we eat for reasons other than just being hungry. We eat to celebrate, we eat when we treat ourselves, and this doesn't just go for food, this can go for alcohol too. Long day at work, we come home, we're gonna treat ourselves with a glass of wine, we're gonna treat ourselves with some food. We eat when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're lonely, when we're depressed, when we're bored. And then we eat for other reasons. We can eat when we're trying to escape current realities that we're in. We can eat to numb certain emotions that we don't want to feel. And then we can use food as a placeholder for something that's missing in our lives that we desire but we don't have yet. So we're all emotionally connected with food. And this emotional connection started the day that we were born. So this is wired into us. We felt the pain and despair when milk was absent, and then we felt the undeniable love and nourishment and connection when our mothers fed us. So we're actually wired to connect with food. Now somewhere down the road, our relationship with food has become broken. We've lost our connection with food, with our body, either from things that have happened to us, words that have been spoken over us, lies that we believe about ourselves, being so busy that we don't take time to prepare meals or even sit down and eat properly. We're on social media all day, we're comparing ourselves to other people and we disconnect from our body, we disconnect from food. And on top of that, we're bombarded with messages about what we should look like and in order to find contentment or success or to be desirable, we have to have this perfect body. So this is what causes that disconnect to happen within us. And we think that the only way to obtain this perfect body is through diet and exercise. So we do everything we can to change our body, we manipulate our calories, we follow protocols and programs, lists of good and bad foods, and we start to view food as fuel and nothing more. Now remember, we're wired to seek this connection with food, but now we're being told, don't seek connection with food. Food is fuel, that's it. So now we have a big disconnect. Our biology is seeking and longing and desiring this connection, a healthy connection, but we're being told that it's bad. Think about how many times you've heard the phrase, food is fuel. How many times have Who's heard that? And we kind of just like shrug it off. Yeah, food is fuel, food is fuel. I used to say that as a personal trainer. Food is fuel, nothing more. But it's not true. Food does so much more than that. Yes, it fuels our body. But every time we eat, we make the conscious decision to be here in our body right now. If you don't eat, eventually you will die. So by eating, you're saying, I choose to live to be here. What can be more intimate than that? Now this inborn connection, emotional connection that we have with food is a good thing, but it can quickly turn negative when we start to use food instead of getting down to the root cause of why we use food in the first place. And this doesn't just go for people that overeat. Like Charlotte had mentioned, I struggled with bulimia for nearly a decade. I was severely underweight. I struggled with food and my body image for so long. And bulimia lasted 10 years, but the mindsets lasted much longer than that. So if we don't get down to the root of our eating challenge, the eating challenge never goes away. We can try to diet and exercise our way out of our challenge, but if we don't really get down to the root cause, nothing ever changes. Our issues with food have very, very little to do with food itself. The more I work with clients, the more I, this just rings so true. They have very little to do with food itself, but more about what we've been through and what we're currently experiencing that we're not dealing well with. If we don't target the root, then nothing changes. 
Something in life always triggers you where you revert back, where you fall off the wagon, and you revert back to old habits. Who's been here with food? Yeah. Who's lost weight on a weight loss diet? Who's gained it back? Yeah. Who, how many of you thought that it was your fault that you couldn't comply and not the programs? Like, oh, Weight Watchers worked, I'll go back on that, right? It was, it was my fault that it didn't work because I didn't have the willpower, I didn't have the control, right? We take that upon ourselves. Well, over 95% of people who lose weight on a weight loss diet will gain it back within one to three years. That's a statistic, if not sooner. And what we're actually finding is studies have shown that dieting is a predictor of future weight, future weight gain. So what is happening here? Why do we keep selling and buying into a system that's not serving us well? Well, one of the biggest reasons, instant gratification. We are a society that loves instant gratification, aren't we? Who remembers, <laughs> remembers dial-up internet? You guys remember? Yeah. How many of you would lose it if you had to wait two minutes for your computer to dial up? And even worse, you can't even talk on your phone when you're on the computer. We would just absolutely freak out because we are so used to being able to access whatever we want, whenever we want. And we want our journey with food and nutrition and our body to be the same. Give us a program. I want A plus B to equal C in as little time as possible, right? Dieting does that. It promises, it, well, it falsely promises that we're going to get somewhere. It gives us lose 30 pounds in 30 days or 10 pounds in three weeks. And we buy into it because that's what society is telling us. Get what you want as fast as you want. Don't work for it. And because we want things to happen very fast, we start to treat our symptoms instead of the actual issue. But our symptoms are not the problem, they're actually the solution. For the majority of the female population, I have found that our symptoms are weight gain, episodes of emotional eating, chronic fatigue, insomnia, digestive issues, reproductive issues, Again, these are symptoms, they're not the actual problem. But what we do is we target our symptoms and we think that they're the issue and not what's really causing them. So we're targeting our symptoms, it's not working out well for us. Let me give you an example because it's so prevalent in the media today and it's prevalent in my life as well, um, having gone through sexual abuse. Here's an example. A woman who's been sexually abused may display the symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. We understand this, right? That's, that's a very common thing that happens. But what about weight gain? We don't view weight gain as the same symptom as the post-traumatic stress disorder. Conscious of it or not, she may eat in a way that promotes her to gain weight, so she feels less attractive to the opposite sex. Excess weight in this case is insulation for her. It's a barrier, it's protection, it's a barrier between her and potential predators. This woman can try and diet and exercise, but if she doesn't get down to the root, nothing ever goes away. Now this is one example. Another example, you're, you're a 30-year-old woman, you've wanted a family your whole life, you're single, nothing seems to be in the pipeline for you, so you go home and your apartment's empty. There's no one there but food. The food, the emotional eating isn't the issue, it's the solution for the deeper problem. For the woman that's been sexually abused, the weight gain isn't the problem, it's the solution to what's really going on. Our challenges with food and body always have a deeper message, but we can't hear it because we've become disconnected. If we aren't connected with our body, our body can't
can't change. And now, I, like I said, we do so many things that disconnect us from our body that we're not even aware of. And dieting, focusing on our symptoms, is one way that we disconnect from our body. If we have things we haven't dealt with, they can sit below the surface of our awareness where they start to cause inner turmoil and chaos, which could turn into chronic low-level stress. Everyone has heard of the stress response? Fight or flight? Do we know what happens when we're in a stress response? Anyone? Shout it out. Cortisol levels, Cortisol levels. yes. Anyone else? No? Our breathing becomes quick and shallow. Uh, we start to secrete cortisol, insulin. Cortisol and insulin, when they're secreted in excess, signal the body to store fat and inhibit lean muscle growth. What else happens when we're in a stress response? Our digestion shuts down. How many of you have had bad digestion? Come on. Our life is miserable when we don't digest food properly, isn't it? We don't assimilate nutrients, we don't absorb them. If our digestion is off, our whole life is miserable. So then we have these hormones surging through our body, our digestion is off, we have stress, and we live with this day in and day out. And we're trying to mask it by changing what we eat and exercising more, and it's not working. So of course we need to be healthy on a physical level. We all know this, we need to exercise, we need to eat whole foods, we need to limit our sugar intake, we need to limit our alcohol intake, get lots of sleep, stop eating processed food. Logically, we know this, but we still keep going back to foods that we know aren't healthy for us because there's something deeper going on. So again, if we don't get down to the root cause of our disorder, nothing changes. You're gonna go on a diet, you're gonna lose weight for a little while, something in life will trigger you. If you don't get to the trigger, then the dieting doesn't matter. You do need to change what you eat, you do need to be healthy on that level, but there's two other levels to you. We have a physical body, we have emotions, and we have a spirit, and each one of those levels has to work in accordance with each other. Our inner world controls our outer world. I'm gonna say that again. Our inner environment controls our outer body. If we can win the battle in our mind, then we have won the war. Our mind controls absolutely everything, and whether you believe it or not, you have complete control over what you allow to think and what you allow to exist in your thought life. This is where the root of our dysfunction comes with eating. Things that have happened to us that we haven't reconciled, that we need to go into and stop masking. So I want everyone to close your eyes. Close your eyes, this is the visualization portion. Take a big inhale. Big inhale, sometimes when we're listening really intently, we don't breathe. And exhale. As you continue breathing, I want you to tune into what your body is saying. Sometimes some people like to put their hand on their heart, do whatever feels comfortable for you. This is a safe space. Tune into what your body is saying when I ask you these questions. Now, you may not struggle with food, but you may struggle with your body, your body image, how you see yourself. I want you to ask yourself, what are my challenges with food or with my body really about? Am I lacking in intimacy? Am I lacking connection, fulfillment, love, support? Am I living a life of purpose? Am I lacking a spiritual connection to something greater than myself? Do I focus on things that are superficial, that are weighing me down? Are there things in my life that I haven't dealt with that cause me to have an unhealthy relationship with food or with my body? Am I working long hours and using food, exercise, shopping, social media as a placeholder for something else that I'm longing for? What am I really hungry for? What's the message being spoken through my challenges? Keep your eyes closed. 
I want you to trust the answers that come up because we're so quick to judge our answers and to think we're wrong, that we know better, but your body and your soul is always telling you something. It's leading you in the right direction. It's not out to get you. Your body's not out to get you. Food's not out to get you. All right, open your eyes. You have the answers to health and to body transformation inside of you. You have it, not a diet, not a program, not even my book. My book is just there to help you figure out the answers that you already have inside of you. You're your own nutritionist. You don't need answers from out there. You have them in here. You have the answers to body transformation inside of you. Stop masking your symptoms with diet and exercise and get down to the root. When you do, you will watch your body transform from the inside out. Thank you so much.